Roken needs more time to fix the ship. This will give him that time. Oh. You've spent 10 years protecting the Jedi. What's up guys, it's Ross here, finally back on MGF Customs. It's once again been a minute, but I've got a pretty special quick showcase for you today. Now with all six parts of Obi-Wan Kenobi, now streaming on Disney+, Plus, and Christina Ariel's featurette, taking us behind the scenes with some of the cast and mostly a lot of the extras crew on Obi-Wan Kenobi, I... Well, I didn't make Obi-Wan or Darth Vader as custom Lego minifigures quite yet. Not sure when or if I will. Still working on painting Spider-Man suits from No Way Home. I'm starting to wrap up Andrew Garfield's suit next here. And it's just, they've been some of the most challenging figures I've ever painted in my life. However, there was this one guy beginning in like part four of the series and then a little bit in part five, but mostly in the finale for Obi-Wan, there was this one fighter and he seemed like a pretty cool guy so I decided to make a custom Lego minifigure of that guy and I surprisingly made him pretty fast. I kind of had a plan for this guy already and you know I took one of those blue caps that have been seen only like a handful of times very randomly in like CMFs and then I actually while watching like the finale for Peaky Blinders was like trying to glue the pieces of another hairpiece that I had sanded in half into the bottom of this hairpiece but then then the hair actually was extending too far out from the back of the cap and so then I essentially had to like sculpt around the back and it was this whole mod that I had to do but it turned out looking all right man and then also you'll notice that I actually did paint up a custom fabric scarf for this guy and the scarf was really cool because it uh, had all these shapes all over it in like primarily you know reds and oranges and yellow really hard to see however I did paint that all up hit it with a bunch of shading and then a lot of like dark gray paint to really bring down the saturation and not make it look too colorful. You'll also notice I have the custom modified, trimmed, and painted Cape Madness trench coat that I pretty much painted up to look like that jacket from the series, and it has all the pockets and the highlights, and it's all there with the buttons and everything. Uh, one of the most time-consuming parts was the torso, because the torso has a lot of lines, right? It was this pretty hefty sweater, so it wasn't just about painting all of those lines on individually, but also figuring out how I was going to get the centermost design work painted in there as well while still making the whole thing look seamless and it was just all really tedious and I, I surprisingly was able to do it in a pretty efficient time frame though and I also did glue on a 3D belt and a belt buckle made from a bit of styrene and then painted all of that also with some shades and weathering and then I had to continue the same line pattern on the arms as well and it definitely requires a lot of time to get a lot of those straight lines and you know get them precisely painted on especially around curved arms however he's got tan gloves man a World War II style ammo belt that's also made from some remaining Cape Madness fabric. Unfortunately, Cape Madness is defunct now and have been since 2020. And then I weathered that, got the buckles painted on there. Didn't actually have to do anything to the hips on this one and just painted the boots on there with some tan weathering to really kind of make it look like this is that fighter that you saw there in the base on Jabim and clearly has been living underground in the sand for what I guess Roken had said in the series had been months by that point. And yeah, to top it all off though, I did glue some pouches from Nate's mini figs onto the sides of either hip and I do some procreate there to kind of install those and then glue them in place and paint them all up and this was just a really special minifigure to make as you'll notice the face that I used I think is actually a Frodo face I use it on my sig fig actually and then I painted the stubble on the face there as well to match with the hairpiece that I had installed into the hat so definitely um, not like the most challenging figure I've ever made all these processes are things that I have done before dozens of times but still, as with all custom minifigures, even if they are processes I'm very familiar with, they still take a good amount of time. But anyway, this was one of the most, if not the most, special custom minifigures I have ever gotten to make, I think, in the entire history of my channel. And I just, um, it was an extraordinary opportunity that I am so thankful for and will forever be grateful to Arturo Vargas and all those who brought me on the project and made it possible in the first place. I will never forget this moment in my life. It was the most incredible time of my life that I got to share with so many remarkable people. So I am gonna get back to work on painting the Spidey suits now. This uh, had to be made though. Had to take the quick pit stop and make this guy, who I think his first name's Ruiz. Haven't come up with a last name. Still open to any ideas down in the comments. And um, yeah, 
I hope to catch you guys soon here on the main channel once again and not in like a month and a half or whatever. So take care, stay safe out there, and as always, may the force be with you, stay on the path, and keep creating. All right, bye-bye. Oh, there's MGF Customs. <laughs> General Kenobi!